Hello, good afternoon. Um, so my name is Diane and my partner is Kaylin Chick. Sorry, I can't make it to class today, but this is my part and I'll be reporting about advanced SQL. So the objectives of the report um, is to able to learn the following. So first, give you a background on advanced SQL, um, know what constraints and triggers are, um, views and indexes, learn SQL in server environment, security and user authorization in SQL, and recursion in SQL. So I will be discussing the first three parts and Kane will be discussing the last three parts. So hopefully, uh, whatever lessons you learn from the topics discussed, you will be able to apply in your respective business roles or in your thesis projects. So first, um, let's define first SQL as a concept. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is a computer language aimed to store, manipulate, and query data stored in relation to databases. So basically, it just means that you are getting values out of a table and translating them in SQL or database language for the machine to understand. So the basic SQL syntax is as written on the screen. So it's select from and where. So basically, it's just saying that you are selecting a characteristic from what table, um, where, and then another condition that satisfies whatever um, parameter you set. But when you say advanced SQL, um, we are dealing with more complex SQL operations. So it's not just merely selecting tables or selecting characteristics. It deals with um, combining tables, such as aggregation, or joining tables, um, getting data from two tables at the same time, modifications if you want to edit or change some values in your table. We have nulls to return values that have blanks in them, and subqueries from select and subqueries from where. So let's go through them one by one. So the first is aggregation. So basically, from the definition itself, aggregation, you are selecting small values out of different tables. Um, you are collecting them all so that you are able to produce a result set that matches the parameters that you entered in the code. So some of them, you can also arrange according to its minimum value, its maximum value. You can total the value that you put in one column, or you can also have it average, or you can return a count. Okay, so for the next slide, I have an example here of count. So I have a table, order table, and in here I want to select um, the number of orders which has Nielsen as the customer. So I have the sample code here. So you do select count, wherein um, from the order table, where Nielsen is the customer. As you can see from the example, it should return the value of 2. If you code this parameters in your language, um, this will be the result set. So just the count number. So Earlier, as mentioned, you can also perform sums, like um, you can replace count within the code and put it as sum or average, and it will um, sum or average, say, the order price column, since it's the column that has numeric values. So we have another advanced SQL function, which is joins. So basically, it functions as um, joining two tables in order to get the same characteristics to it. So for example, PID is your primary key in person's table. And then you have another table, which is the orders table, which has the primary key PID as well. So what it does, um, it joins both tables and uses PID as the reference to join the two tables together and to return the result set. So we have different SQL joins, which are the following. We have inner join, left join, right join, and full join. So going through them one by one, so we have inner join. It returns rows where there is at least one match in both tables. So the syntax is the standard code for inner join. So for example, in person's table, we have primary key 1 and 3. In the order table, we have 1 and 3 as well. So what we want to do here is match the PID of person's table and the PID of order's table and have that as the result set. So if you code that by applying the syntax I showed earlier, the result set will be this table highlighted in yellow blue. We have left join. So the left join returns all rows from the left table, even if there are no matches in the right table. So the standard syntax for this is the below statement. So as an example, um, we have the same persons and orders table. We just um, indicate the left join syntax here. And then the left join returns all the rows from the left table in persons table, even if there are no matches in the right table. 
it's the same as the left join. However, if we do right join, it works as the other way around. Um, the rows from the right table um, returns values even if there is no match in the left table. So if you change the left join earlier in earlier code and replace it with the right join, it will yield a different result. The full join returns rows where there is match in one of the tables. Here, um, it's quite similar. However, um, it doesn't matter anymore if you are referencing from the left or the right table. It just joins the tables together regardless of the characteristics in it. Okay, so next part of advanced SQL is modifications in the table. We have three operations, which is insert, delete, and update. Insert functions as a code wherein you just insert new records or new values in the table. So insert into which table and what values do you want to put in there. For example, I have a table here that you want to insert a value. So you just add the syntax below and then um, come the result set, it will add already the value that you indicated in the insert code. So we also have a function of deleting records in the table. So the syntax here is just basically delete from which table and the condition that you place. So for example, from this table, you want to delete the last name of the fifth row with the first name of this one. So the result set will be as follows. Since you indicated specifically which last name and first name, you want deleted from the person's table. Okay, the next function is update. So this is used to update or modify existing values in the table. So to use this, you have a syntax, update, and then from which table, and then you set the attribute and the expression, and set the condition that you have identified as well. So for example, I have here in the table, um, you want to modify um, the last name of Benson and first name of Tob, and then you want to change it to the syntax that you identified. So this will yield the result upon running this code. We also have nulls, which will return fields that do not have any values in there. So for example, you want to return address columns that don't have values. So you just select the table and then indicate which column you want to return without values and indicate that you want, it, you want null values in there. So the result set will yield the following. For the next slide, I have a summary here of all the advanced SQL concepts we've learned. So we have aggregation, just to reiterate again, it is collecting multiple characteristics to return a new whole set that you define. We have joint operators, which gives a link to the different tables. We have modifications, which enables you to change or modify, add, or delete records in the existing table. And also, it will return blank or empty fields in the column that you selected. So we have another concept, which is constraints. So as defined, constraints are used to limit the type of data that go inside the table. So basically, this is your checks, or it's the program that ensures that whatever the user inputs in the system is correct. So we have sample constraints, such as the following. We have not null, we have unique, we have two important characteristics in the database, which are your primary key and foreign key. So later, we will differentiate them, and then the checks and the default. Not null enforces um, a user not to enter any empty fields. So it sets the syntax as, for example, in the table earlier, so PID shouldn't be null because it's your primary key. So it forces the user to enter a value in that field. We also have unique. So this makes the value unique compared to the other records in the database. So the syntax as follows. So for example, PID, we selected it as the unique value because you want it to be your identifier in getting or retrieving values in your table. Primary key serves as the one referencing the unique ID of one table to another table. Foreign key functions similarly the same. However, for example, in here, um, this is the person's table. And then this is the order table below. So the PID functions as the primary key because it links two tables together. But if you look at the order table, the unique ID here or the foreign key should be order ID. It should be the unique um, identifier in the values in that table. For check, um, it's used to limit the value range that can be placed in a column. So for example, it deals with um, the number of strings or characters you want entered in your field. 
So in the code below, when you are creating a table, it says that um, when you want entered in last name or first name column, we set var car to indicate the number of string values that you want the user to enter in those parameters. And then you can also do um, a check below, for example, PID is a value and you don't want it less than zero. So it's some sort of a check function because it enables the user to enter the correct values that the programmer set. And then we also have a default function. It's used to desert already a uh, default value in the column. So the code is how it will. Triggers, on the other hand, functions as statements that perform a function depending on the instruction made by the programmer. So the basic syntax for trigger is as follows. To further illustrate the completeness of the sample structure of a trigger, so we have here a create. So this clause creates a trigger with a given name or overrides an existing trigger with another name. And then we also have the before, after, or instead of phrase. So this clause indicates um, the time that the trigger should be fired or should be executed. And then we also have the insert, which determines um, the triggering event itself, and then off and on tables to determine where the trigger clause should take effect. And then the referencing or old statement, the clause to reference the old and the new values of the data being changed. And then the last statement is the for each row column, and it is used to determine whether a trigger must be fired of which row should be affected, depending on what you selected. And then once you set the trigger function, um, the SQL statements begin. For the next slide, we have views. So the views functions as a virtual table. So basically, this is your pre-code so that come your select statement, it will be easier for you to code it already or just to create a one line. So for example, you want to create a function or a table product list. So this is your syntax for it. So once you set this virtual table, when you do a select query, instead of typing all that syntax again, you can just select asterisk or select all from and then the view that you created so that it will shorten your code or yield the same results as the sample code you set earlier. And then lastly, we have the indexes. So the indexes allow the database applications to find data fast. So basically this functions as your bookmark in SQL statements. To create an index, you just input the following syntax code and specify which table name and column name you want it to find. Okay, so for the next part to discuss SQL server environments, I give you King. 